Right, people ask us, um, do we, um, why are we Sisters International? Do we just support women? Is it about single women? Now, Sisters International, um, we support families. So we support women, men and families. A lot of our groups and our support groups, we're supporting women. S women are not, you know, most of the women, they're not single. So we're supporting women who have husbands, women who have partners, women that are looking after their fathers, women that have brothers. You know, we look after women and support women so that women in turn can support their families. So it's not about single women, it is about Sisters International coming together, supporting each other so that we can be stronger physically, mentally, spiritually, in every way so that we can be there more for our husbands, we can be there more for our children, we can be there more for our partners, our fathers, our brothers. Um, so that's what we're about. Now men come to us and we do support them as well um, with their businesses, if they want to promote their businesses, if they want advice for shipping, if they want advice um, in terms of land um, issues, we are there and we have quite a lot of clients that are men as well, that are brothers as well. Now today I've got a special guest in the house. I've got a gentleman that um, repatriated from the US into the Gambia with his wife. Um, and I'm gonna interview him, yeah? And talk to him about how this journey has been for him and how he sees uh, repatriating to the Gambia. Okay, I will be back. Hello, now this is Wickham. And as I said before, Wickham has repatriated to the Gambia, Africa. And um, we're going to ask him a few questions. So Wickham, how long have you been in the Gambia? Well, December will be two years since I've been here. We decided to make this change and I think it was a welcome change. I do, I'm enjoying the time here. And if you don't mind telling our brothers and sisters, how did you make that transition? Um, what made you say, right, because you came lock, stock and barrel, yes? Yes. So what made you say, right, I'm going to come and live in the Gambia, lock, stock and barrel, no going back? Well, you know, living in the United States is, it's not all that peachy cream as how it is. You, you work almost 24-7. But there has to come a time in your life when you say, you have to stop at some point. Because all you do is work, work, work and pay, work and pay, work and pay. So I don't want to retire and when I retire, all I can do is live out maybe four or five years and then after that it's a nursing home. I want to have some, a little bit of years behind me that I can say, okay, not that I can, anything can happen because we are living in an uncertain world. but. I want to know that I have the opportunity to travel and go places while I'm able to and I have strength in my body instead of going to places where I have to be using a walker and I'm, I just want that behind me. So I decided to just stop early, do my own retirement early, go somewhere where I don't have it so expensive to live and just chill. And I find Africa as one of the places, the Gambia especially because number one, it's not as developed as the others. So because it's not as developed as the others, things are a little bit more cheaper. It's a little bit cheaper to live and it's more convenient for me. And the growth here is happening, but it's at a slower pace. So I like that kind of system so I can grow with the country. So what do you think, um, or what have you found the most challenging in terms of transitioning between the US and Africa and Gambia? The biggest challenge that I have here is that the convenience. There's a lot of conveniences that I miss in America. It's like everything is at your fingertip in America. Here, you have to go to three, four, five different places and sometimes you still don't get it. <laughs> and you know, you, you can like, for instance, you need a part for your story, you just go there, uh, they pull it up on the computer, pull up your vehicle and make and model and boom, your parts. Here, you have to take off the old part, bring it to them and they match it and give it to you. It's a little bit frustrating, but it's a trade-off because that is something that anybody can live with. You know, it's, it's not any big adjustment that you have to make. So I don't find that a much of a problem. Other than that is some of the people. And I mean, you know, people everywhere are different. 
when I compare here to Jamaica, this reminds me of Jamaica in the days when I was in school. You know, where the growth is slow, but after a while it just comes off into this big, beautiful blossom that everybody likes. So I enjoy it. I just like the difference in the lifestyle. So what do you think when, um, you know, a lot of people at the moment are a bit fearful, those that are coming and those that are thinking of coming, some, and some that are here have voiced that they're a bit fearful because they've heard there's burglaries and, and, and people have been mugged and um, broken into. Um, so when those murmurings come, you know, we try and support people, but it becomes a, you know, a lot of people talk about it. It's almost like in a goldfish bowl. What do you say to, to that? Because I'm sure you've heard as, as well when people, something happens, everybody talks about it. Let's put it this way. We're living in a changing world. And you're going to find people do things. There is nothing that is happening here that is not happening anywhere else in the world. As far as I'm concerned, the robbers that are here, people will come here with maybe machetes and knives to rob or to pick your pocket. You go to the West, they're not coming with machetes and knives, they're coming with guns. And they'll shoot you without a question, and you don't even know who do it. So, we are this is not like comparing apples to oranges here. This is what is happening worldwide. I go to Jamaica, people will break into your house and, 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 and shoot your head off and take what you have and go. The last time I went there for a funeral, I almost lost my life because of robbery. There's no difference here, so there's nothing to be afraid of. The safety that you might think you have in America is not safe because almost everybody has to walk with a gun in their bag or in their waist. Here you don't have to. Not even a gun. The police don't even have a gun here. So the, to me, the, the robberies and the little things that happen here is pale in comparison to what is happening in the West. It's worse there than here. So as far as I'm concerned, if you have two good dogs, if you have thieves running from dogs, then you know you don't have really have a good thief. Because he has, he hear the dog bark, he's gone. In America, the dog bark, he shoot the dog and still come for you. So what's the point? I mean, so there's, to me, if that is the only reason why you don't want to come, then you didn't want to come in the first place. Because this is what is happening worldwide. And I think it is much safer here to me, not driving on the road and somebody want to get mad with me and shoot me through my car window or break into my house or whatever or even on the road talking and you get into a fight somebody shoot you so this is what happens in in, in, the, in the west so what are we talking about here there, this is this is just a part of life living in living in a world packed with sin and people who just don't have directions so why make a big deal about it? It's 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 simple. This is this is this is a natural occurrence, as far as I would say. So it doesn't put you off being in Africa and living in Africa. Oh no, because if I can get killed here, I can get killed there. So what's the point? It's a different place you die. So we're gonna die somehow. Whether by gunshot, whether by a car hitting us, something falling from the sky, we die in our sleep. So why are you gonna make a little break and prevent you from having some peace of mind? I have much better peace of mind because one thing I can say, I can sleep in my bed for a long time. I don't have to get up. I have almost two acres of land and I pay less than $7 per year for the taxes. You have any place in America that I can get that for? I'll come take it tomorrow. And, and debts as well? No, I do not no pay debt. mortgage. I do not pay light because I'm on solar. I do not pay water bill because I have a borehole. Show me a place in the West that I can get that and I'll come take it tomorrow. So, are you going to make a little break and stop you? Fix your house in a way where it is protected. And your land you can grow. And, and you, you are can growing. grow. Right now, I, I have plantains that I can cut in a short while. Banana, cassava, sweet potato. And you've only been here for and a few years. And I've only been here for a few years. I have about 20 odd orange trees, orange, mandarin, tangerine, grapefruit. Uh, lime, lemon that I have planted on the place, and I have sweet sap, sour sap, guinep, aki, you name it. I'm setting up myself that I'm going to be self-sufficient. And you cannot get this self-sufficiency because most of the places where you live in America, you can hardly plant anything there because you have to keep your lawn in front and in the back you want it for the kids to play. So where are you going to plant your stuff? Come to Africa and enjoy life the good days of your life. Enjoy it where you can relax in the sun. Go to the beach, 
Oh my God, come on people. There's no giraffes here and no damn monkeys <laughs> and elephants to take you away. But you can see them if you go to Senegal. But if you go to Senegal, right, if you go to places, you will see them. And, and further down south in the country here. But, but they don't live amongst people. But they people. don't live amongst people as how they make it seems. This is, this is, this is living. Yeah. I mean, you think I could be sitting here doing an interview in America and, 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 and don't have to worry about, oh, I didn't make any money today. But I can do it here. So what advice would you give somebody who wants to transition to the Gambia? First of all, come and pay a visit. Look around and see if this is what you want. Don't follow what the YouTube is saying or what other people are saying because somebody's taste is not yours. So come here, see what you like. And if you do like it, have some money. First thing you do, secure a place to live. Make sure you get yourself a piece of land. There's a lot of land here available. Find some reputable companies that can sell you a good piece of land. Purchase that land. You can stay in the U.S. and stay there and have somebody competent here who can build for you so that when you leave the United States, you come straight into your home. Do not come here and plan to rent because most people come here and get stuck in a rental apartment. Because one, you cannot afford, you, know, you might not have enough money to continue paying the rent and still buy land and build and, and the rent of, can increment and the rent sometime over the years increase so what you need to do is make sure that you come with a good amount of income and then make sure you have a way of have some money coming in if you're not at the retirement age you don't need a whole bunch of money to live here then again, it depends on your lifestyle if you're the mm -hmm. kind of person who go out every night and eat out every night but if you're one of those who will come home and cook so you can just go down to the seaside and get some fresh fish, go to the market, get some fresh produce. Come on. No GMO, no stale food that has been sitting for years, no fish that has been in the freezer for 15 years. Fresh fish coming from the sea to your plate. Fresh vegetables from the garden to your plate. That's living, people. And extend your lifespan. And in terms of business, um, we can, do you do business in the Gambia? Well, for right now, I, I want to chill a little bit because i'm a mechanic by trade and I, I i have one a few private customers that i work with but um i haven't gone full scale into it but so what I've advice been, would you give somebody if they wanted to come and and do business in the gambia bring your business bring your tools and and and, and what do you want to do mobile or once you build up a good clientele and you do good work people will come after you because mechanics are needed in the gambia and other services are needed here in the medical field there's a lot of people who need services those are services that are needed here so come with your skills and get a chance to sit down and think of what you would want to do with your life from here forward don't come here with intention to search for jobs there are no jobs here you need to come here and create jobs because the opportunity is here the door is wide open and the business rental market can also trap you exactly so don't come here and think of say you know what let me start a business and then I take the money from the business and, and uh, build a house or whatever. Build your house first. Do your business from your house and when it grows, you move out. Because if you don't have a secure place here to live, then you're gonna have to board the next flight back to where you're coming from. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people are falling into that trap. Yeah, and what, and what could be good is doing your business from your home. From your home. From your own land, rather than paying big, big rent, rent for a Right, $180,000 a year or whatever. I mean, you know, if you compare the money that you pay here for certain things and compare it in US dollars, you will say, oh, that is cheap. But remember, if you have a bucket of water and you keep taking from the bucket and nothing is going back in after a while the bucket is going to get empty so that's why i say make sure you have some way of money coming in that after you exhaust your savings there is some money still coming in that you can continue to live because this is where you're going to be for the rest of your life if you plan to stay here but if you can do your farming to cover your food don't have no bills to pay you can live easy live like a king and how have you found building in the Gambia, you, you and your wife? How have uh, you found building, building? Can, building, it's a little bit challenging. I wouldn't say a little bit challenging. <laughs> it is challenging because there's a lot of people here who say they are builders and they do not even know how to, to make a straw hut. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's about making the money. So they will lie through their teeth and tell you that they can do this. So 
you have to make sure that you get somebody who knows what they are doing because everybody here can build, everybody can repair, everybody is electrician, everybody is a mechanic, everybody is everything. Until when you give it to him and he messes it up, all you're going to hear is sorry, oh. They say when you build a house in the Gambia, you go to, through at least three to four through, builders. Yes, because is you that have true? To, yeah. yes, you have to fire them because when you look there, they come to work and they want you to give them the tools to work for you, and it's like. How comes you're a builder and you don't have tools, you know? And they want to be paid before And the they want is. to be paid before <laughs> a big down payment and all of those things. So you have to watch out for all of those things because people will take your money and you will not see them again. Because the poverty rate here is high and people will try to scam you. It's just like, you know, in America, a contractor will take some money from you and he disappears with your money. It's the same thing here in a different way. So it's not that you're coming here to come to Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. You're coming here and you just have to have your game on. You have to have your guards up. Don't just walk here and say, okay, everybody's normal. No, it is not. We are dealing with people and money and people. They will just take your money. And where is he? I don't know because everybody here have the same name. You have 50 people who are called Omar. 2,000 people call Fatu, whatever, Lamin. so so I'm Lamin, so <laughs> you just have these names, so if you ask for a Lamin, which Lamin? I mean, the Lamin from here, there, so, you know, you just have to be careful. Just don't come here and act as if you know everything, because they will scam you out of your clothes, and you go home and realize, I was walking naked on the road, yes, they will do that. That's how good they are. As we say in Jamaica, they are brother and nasty picking them. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Wickham. What What is the last word you would say then to um, those that are living living in the Gambia? Those that are living in the Gambia, if you are still here renting, you need to find a way out of it. Buy your 20 by 20. Build one room. The beauty about living in the Gambia is you can start a house, finish a portion of it, move into it, and continue building while you live. In the West, it has to be completed before you go in. Here, you can build as you go, and that will save you money. When I built my house, it wasn't completed, but I move into it, and I finish it while I was in it. But guess what? Nobody can come and say the rent is due because I'm on my own. So get a place, and for God's sake, when you come here, find the right people who have been living here for the longest time and let them advise you. And when they advise you, take the advice because a lot of people come here and go out on a limb on their own and when they fall on their sword they come back crying or they have to go back to the west and then they go and bring bad news that oh they do this to me no you did it to yourself because on a brock ticking on a year's hole and and you're one of the uh, the men as i say because at the beginning we say we advise women as well as men so you're one of the men that sisters international yes has advised and has facilitated in you being a, a land and a land owner because yes. i mean this lady who is interviewing me she's the one who advised me got me my land and i'm telling you everything went smooth and i did not lose one penny and if she tell you to jump, please jump. If she tell you to sit, sit down. If she tell you to walk away, walk away. Because she is not going to leave you. She has been coming here for like 14, 15 years now. Those are people you find. Do not find those people who just love to talk and take you to places to make you spend out your money. And then after a while, where did my money go? Go to people who have sense. Because a lot of people come here and I think they lose their minds when they come here. I think they're because of the freedom and the ease of life. Why they just not thinking anymore. When you come here, go to people who have sense. Who can give you good, solid, sound advice. So that you don't lose your money that you work so hard for. Because if you run out of money in this country, there's nobody you can go to to say, lend me. We don't use that word. There's no banks here that lend money. Everything here is cash. It's a cash society. Everything you buy, you buy it for cash. No, like in America, you pay monthly. No, we don't do that. Cash power, you pay for your light before you get it. The water is the only thing that you get a bill for. So think about that for a moment. 
but when you check it out it's worth it because you live within your means mm -hmm. and that's what this place makes you become you live for what you have in america you just spend because you can do it you have a you credit card credit. you can mm -hmm. just spend the credit card and then have the sweat to worry about it at the end of the month no here you pay for it and when you bring it home it's yours you don't have to worry about paying for it anymore and if you plan to move, bring everything, the cat, the dog, the rat, everything. <laughs> the rat. And whatever you don't need, people will buy them from you. That's a mistake I made. I gave away most of my stuff. And when I come here, I said, man, I should have taken this. I should have taken that because it's not here. Furniture, bring your own furniture. Bring your own bed, bring your own mattress, your own pots, your own pants. Bring every single thing. And if you have excess, people will buy them from you. Definitely. And that's my advice to you. But welcome to the Gambia, the smiling coast of Africa. Thank you, we come.